Welcome back to 21 Minute Reads with me, Maya D. This is kind of like my virtual book club because in these five minute or so videos, I share with you my takeaways from my current reading. Right now, that is African Dance, an artistic, historical, and philosophical inquiry edited by Dr. Kariyama Welsh. As a part of the Read 21 and 21 Challenge, I'm reading 21 minutes per day, every day as an action of self-love, an investment into myself, and a way of providing some consistency in an ever-changing world. Hoping that you will join me along in this journey by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and dropping some comments down there in that comment section so there's an actual dialogue. Having in mind that while I have several decades of experience as an educator, performer, and researcher, I'm not the know-all be-all for this book. I'm simply providing a space for dialogue. Well, this week I read pages 65 through 103, and here are my three takeaways. Takeaway number one, tools. In the essay written by Tracy Snipe, um, I'm reminded of how dance is a tool for expressing emotions, learning to regulate those emotions, but also politics. The quote reads, when independence came, Africans revitalized some traditional dances and formed dance companies such as Le Ballet African in Guinea and the National Dance Company of Senegal who could be used to increase national identity while serving as cultural ambassadors abroad. Nevertheless, for an African dance company, selecting a title such as Le Ballet may be a misnomer, which is not to say that African dance cannot be a ballet. In this example, the term ballet robs the dance of its original political content since ballet is primarily associated with the West, the territory of the former colonizer. Well, I would argue that it only robs if we allow it to continue to rob in this present time. When we remember the definition of ballet, a performance that includes music, movement, costuming, lights, design, and a storyline, then we are reminded that any dance form can be a ballet if it has those other things surrounding it. When we remember that definition, we also are more in alignment, I feel, more in alignment with Catherine Dunham's humanitarian work and work to increase the value of dance forms that are not that classical ballet form that originated in Europe. When we remember that definition of ballet, we also will remember that, well maybe remember, that classical ballet is but a baby when compared to some of the other forms of classical dances with the majority of them coming out of Europe and I'm sorry, coming out of Asia and being thousands of years old as opposed to ballet, classical ballet, um, being only a few hundred years. Takeaway number two, no meat. Did you know that carnival translates to no meat? Well, in the African Influences in Brazilian Dance essay by Miriam Mariani, I'm reminded both of Dr. Brenda Dixon Gottschild's use of the term intertextuality in relation to the cross-pollination that happens when dance forms are done close to or, you know, what happens with the dance forms, how they grow and things like that. But also this idea presented by Joseph Campbell, the monomyth model, that proposes that all stories, regardless of where they originated in time and in space, have the, same, have the same structure. I bring this into play as it relates to Carnival, its significance and its participants. The author writes, no other festivity produces so much unity. Blacks, whites, rich and poor have during Carnival time, have the same objective and that is to stay together. So earlier in the page, it's noted that as uh, Carnival uh, transitioned into urban white spaces, it began to incorporate ideas like the float, and in parentheses it says allegoric cars, masks, costumes, and dances. It would seem to me that this unity is nestled in a commonality that we see from all of the different groups of people that are sharing that space. In our previous readings, we've talked about uh, the use of the masquerade, of movement, of poetry, of allegory, and, and things like that. Um, and even the idea that this was a practice that was in Italy, that was brought by the Medici family into France and served as a precursor, that spectacle served as the precursor to 
what we now know as classical ballet. So in short, we see these joyous moments of coming together in celebration and in unity resulting in new forms of dance, like classical ballet from Europe and samba. Takeaway number three, because we're getting up on time. Ooh, this is gonna be a quick one, monolith. Under the Lash by Katrina Hazard Gordon seems to discuss how African-American dance is not a monolith because it's very much informed by regional circumstances. So I'm not done this section yet, so I'll have more for you next week. In the meantime, remember to like, subscribe, drop some comments, stay blessed, and I'll see you next week.